What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today I've built a new gear train in Scrap Mechanic and I kind of made it look like a Heisler. But I built a new gear train because it's been a while since I've built something cool in Scrap Mechanic and I wanted to rebuild a gear train simply because I think like gear trains are possibly some of the coolest trains out there with all the mechanical stuff underneath going on. And I've built one of these before, if we actually take a look at the lift, um, I do have a really really old gear train here and this was one with like the side engine but you'll notice i can't actually spawn this because i'm missing a mod i had modded train wheels on this and i don't know what mod that is i actually tried enabling all the mods i have subscribed and i still couldn't spawn this so i'm missing some mod which is unfortunate so i decided to build a whole new one that is completely vanilla and has an internal gear mechanism rather than the mechanism on the side and kind of looks a little bit like a Heisler. So I kind of went through some steps to build this, but you can see we've got a three cylinder piston engine, three piston, whatever, three piston engine here in the middle, which spins the shaft forward and back. And then of course we've got some gearing on either of the trucks and it can fully rotate and go up and down hills, no problem. So I just wanted to sort of go through the design process first before we, you know, drive the train around and hook, you know, let's drive the train around. Who cares? It can, we can just, here we go. There, look, we can turn it on, right? And there, and there it goes. We'll just, you know, this is a loop. This is a, uh, a loop track that I have. It, it'll, it'll come back around. It should be fine, I think. But anyway, we're gonna go through the design process. So of course, the first thing I had to do was build a truck. So I built one of these, really simple. Um, this is, modded scrap mechanic rail if you guys haven't seen it before it is a terrain asset pack so these are built into the tiles and then of course they're like i think seven blocks wide something like that looks like seven blocks wide and so we've got a vanilla truck now of course because we don't have actual train wheels in scrap mechanic without mods and unfortunately i really i honestly don't know what mod those original wheels were using we've got these sort of vertical pegs that hold the inside of the track and then we've got just the wheels riding on top. And that's each truck. This truck, you'll notice, I've got this double gearing setup. So uh, we could actually power this if we just take an electric engine and slap it onto the back. And if we spin, you know, this little thing, you can see it spins that center shaft, which of course powers the two gears. And these are just basic, you know, small pipe piece gears. Uh, they're not exactly the greatest, but of course this isn't really the issue. The issue with the gear train is you got to make sure that the trucks can move independently of the train itself, especially when you're going around corners. It can't just be straight. So I went on to stage two of the gear train, which is this test rig right here. So if you look at this, this is the same truck setup, but it's got a drive shaft slapped onto the front of it. Is that, is our train? Oh, there it is. It's over there now. Perfect. You can just see it. But yeah, so we've got this drive shaft and this is kind of hooked up into a controller mechanism. And the reason why is so I can press um, left and right, as you can see, right? And that'll kind of simulate what happens if our train is going around corners. And you can see there are universal joints on the drive shaft. It's actually got two bearings, one horizontal and one vertical to give it that universal on both sides. And you've got that piston in the middle, which has no strength to it. And that acts as sort of like an expansion joint on the shaft because the shaft actually gets longer as you pull it out and, you know, move it up and down. And here we've got the same thing. We could tilt this whole assembly up just to prove that if we were going up a steep hill, it would still work. And then, of course, if we press W and S, um, is our engine? Oh, it's not even hooked up. Fantastic. So if we hook up our engine, right, and then we press W and S, you can see we're only powering it from that one point at the middle and no matter how we turn the drive shaft it will still transmit power down to the wheels with that expansion joint and everything else on the previous gear train i had the same thing i had an expansion joint i did it with like some weird double suspension like two pieces of suspension in either direction um on this one i got a little smarter and realized if you just have a really weak piston you can extend it out no problem and you can see the universals they're rotating and everything rotates back to the gear and delivers power and you know like i said we're only putting power to this one bearing right here at the end. Everything else is free bearings. So once that was done, it was a matter of slapping that all together, which of course we did in this, oh no, that's the one with the engine. We did it a different test rig. This one here, slap the two of them together. You know, same thing. You got two shafts, right? They're all connected, one big piece. You know, you, you get it, you get it. And then I decided to put a piston engine in it because of course, that would make the most sense. Now, the Heisler has a, like, V2 piston engine, I guess. It's like a two-cylinder V right in the middle. Uh, this is a three-cylinder, which I've used before in survival. This is, like, my standard survival go-to piston engine. 
It's kind of really easy to use, which is why I put it. And of course, it's got a really easy forward and back. We're just, you know, lowering these two white planks in front of the sensors. And that's what determines the piston direction. And of course, the direction of rotation. And this basically generates all our power. So the only power this train has is coming from those three pistons going up and down, which in turn rotate the shaft, which drives the front and back axles. And then, of course, you can see as we go around the corner, the corners are pretty shallow, but the trucks can you know, move independently, the train kind of drives across the middle line, and it all works great. I originally was going to do a V2 engine, I thought about it, and then I couldn't figure out how to make like a really good V2 engine in scrap mechanics, so I asked somebody that I know that's like a piston engine expert, and that's Glace, and they were like, yo, just use a piston engine that like I have on the workshop. And so I, I downloaded it, and this is a V4, and he was like, oh, this is easy. Like, trust me, you'll figure it out. There's like a forward and reverse and whatever else. And like, I just, this thing's just like, I don't even understand how this works. Apparently I already, see, I already screwed it up. All right, there we go. See, if you get it on, it like, it moves really fast. And I, th I think this is rotating. Yeah, see, look, that's, it's rotating incredibly fast. And it's a V engine. Um, I don't know how to make it go in reverse. It seems, it seems overly complicated, and it had this, like, wobbling thing when it stopped. Anyway, Glace, fantastic piston engine builder. Uh, this is, this is beyond my level. Also, look at how small this thing is. Like, what is this? What is this? You got, like, bearings with pistons inside of bearings attached to... Yeah, this is a whole level of glitch welding that I'm just not... It's not even glitch welding, it's like glitch placing. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not at that level. So anyway, I put a three-cylinder in it, fantastic. And then, of course, I made it look like a Heisler, which, where is it? I was hoping to stall enough time until it came back around. Um, I don't, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. There it is, way over there. It's right over there. It's still, it's still making its rounds. Unfortunately, it is a piston-powered engine. This thing, if I had hooked this up, this is like an incredibly fast piston-powered engine. Would probably break these gears. This one's obviously a little bit slower. And then, of course, with the gears and the meshing and all that, it, it does kind of provide a little bit of resistance to the whole system. All right, perfect. And just like that, we caught the train. Uh, unfortunately, I can't jump through the train. Oh, God. I gotta get... Yeah, excuse me. I gotta get... I gotta get... Oh, I guess I can just get in the seat. Perfect. There we go. So you'll see we've got the... Uh, I can't get... Oh, wait. Hold on. Can I get in the cab without... This is a little bit of an issue. Whenever you get out of the seat, you pop onto the roof. Okay, we're got Just... Gotta just time the jump. Jump. Just jump... Bor okay, I could turn it off, but we're going to do this. There we go. Perfect. Almost jumped out the other side. So I made it, you know, kind of like an open cab. There is a seat there that controls it. It's really just two switches to go forward or, you know, forward and reverse. One forward, one reverse. I did try and make it look a little bit like a Heisler, but obviously I have some issues with the fact that this train is a little long. The wheelbase between the two trucks is a little bit long just because of all the universals and expansion joints and stuff. This is a little bit more compressed than the test rigs. I had more drive shaft pieces on the test rig. And of course, if I used a smaller engine, I could have it working. But it's a pretty simple setup, really. And it's kind of cool. But I want to hook up some cars to it as soon as we get around this corner. Now, it is scrap mechanic, so uh, there is a little bit of lag. Like, right off the bat, this train drops about 100 frames just because of all the gearing and stuff and all the bearings. And, like, if you look at it on the connection tool, I mean, it's it's cool, but it's just a lot of free-floating bearings, which, obviously, scrap mechanic is not the biggest fan of. So we're just going to wait until we get on to... Um, I guess we should go back that way, actually. That would be the straighter section. So let's just go in reverse for a bit. Pretty easy. And, of course, we've got some... Uh, all right, you know what? I'm going to actually put a toilet here. There we go. Perfect. Easy. And, of course, we've got some cardboard here for fuel because, you know, it seemed appropriate. We've got a little fuel hatch. I didn't really put too many details on it, honestly. I'm not really the most aesthetic builder in the world. And, to be honest, the mechanics took a fair amount of time. But I felt like it wasn't, you know, it doesn't look too bad. And I didn't want to put any moving aesthetics. All the aesthetics on this are completely static just because, like, you know, like, no opening hatches, doors, stuff like that. And that's just because I didn't want to accidentally, you know, cause any more lag. So, we'll hook up a couple cars to it. I'm assuming the cars are going to cause a fair amount of lag. And we'll put a fair amount of load on these cars. So, I think I've got an empty... There we go, an empty set of train cars. Look at that. I should have built, like, a hitch into this. I didn't really think about it because I hadn't hooked it up to any sort of cars yet. Like that, right? Alright, that's perfect. Oh god, see the- the soon as you put some cars on it, the uh, the game just decides it is too many bearings. 
to calculate. There we go. Perfect. Good solid 10 FPS. It's exactly what I like to hear. I mean, obviously, we're going to pull two empty cars. That's not going to be any sort of issue. Oh my god, it like really kills the frame rate. This game does not like a lot of free-floating bearings all connected together. I mean, the cars are relatively simple. They do have a universal sort of joint on each of the, you know, swivel areas. So they can go up, down, left, right, all that. And then they've just got free-floating bearings, you know, for the wheels and the trucks. But, uh, yeah, it, it is not a happy time. We should add some weight to these, though. So let's actually maybe go down to just one car instead of two. What if I ditch this back one? Is that going to save me any frames at all? It really doesn't. Oh, no, it does. As soon as they're far enough away. Look at that. Perfect. All right, so we can tell one car, no problem. All right, so now all we got to do is just add a ton of weight to this car. We'll get to this straight here and we'll stop. And we'll see what the limit of this gear trade is. I feel like it's going to be a lot. Piston engines and scrap mechanic are generally pretty powerful. Uh, they can just They can just pull a whole ton of weight. Why are we lifting? Is that... Oh, it's just bouncing. Oh, no, look, the, the wheels aren't even touching the ground there. That's so weird. I wonder why that's happening. Not sure. All right, let's stop here. Let's add some weight. So, concrete three. Heaviest block in the universe. And let's just start layering it up. Let's, you know, let's just make, honestly, like, a massive brick. It, we're just going to fill the car to this height. This is going to be super heavy if it doesn't break the suspension. Well, there is no suspension, but I mean, like, it'll compress the bearing to the point of no return. Actually, that's true. We could lower the physics calculation. Like, if we went to physics, I mean, okay, a piston engine on physics one. This is going to be ridiculous. But if we lower the physics, we'll get tons of frames. That's physics one. Obviously, that's not going to work. What if I go to, like, physics five? No, the piston engine is still, it's still not seven. No. Do the, the piston engines really not work unless they're it, unless it's max? Oh, it's just perma. Oh no, yeah, it has to be max. Okay, fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't really have a scale to weigh this, so I have no relative for how heavy this is. But it's a lot. I know that much. I mean, concrete three is just the heaviest block by a mile, and this is a lot of concrete three. Like, look at that. That is a brick if I've ever seen one. All right. This is, I think this is going to pull it, no problem. Oh! Okay, maybe a little bit of a problem, but it still pulls it. Are we going to be able to build up any speed? Oh, it's so laggy. It's ridiculously laggy. Like, look at that, though. Look at it just chug along. I don't know if we're actually going to build up any speed, though. That's amazing. Look at <laughs> that's so much weight. Like, that is... I You know, we should weld that to the top of a car just to prove a point. But that's just insane. that engine go i think the wheel slip is like the wheels are slipping more than it's moving forward like i don't think it's going to build up speed let's try and change the physics while it's doing this let's go to physics eight no see the the piston engine just falls apart it actually gets more wheel slip too at lower physics all right there we go advanced oh it's it's like this is still all broken hold on yeah when lowering it to lower physics it uh it just breaks the entire piston. All right. Mega brick. I mean, if this still pulls it, I feel like there's no... Li oh my god, the lag gets worse. All right. Does it... Oh. Look at that. Unbelievable. It actually can still do it. Kind of. Oh. I mean, it just gets wheel slip, though. It's really... I feel like this is not... You know what? Let's, let's let this free. Let's... Let's goodbye, brick. Oh my god, look at that. That's so amazing. We could probably push it without as much lag. Look at that. It does not move, though. That is crazy. Well, I only have one more test I really want to try with this gear trade. Obviously, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I really do like trades in Scrap Mechanic. Uh, it's too bad that there aren't, like, any sort of natural track features. I know, like, people have made, like, survival trades and stuff. But you could do, like, monorails and stuff with track that you build out of wood. Like, Cosmo and I had a wicked monorail system in our survival world for transporting boats but you know it would be really cool if survival had random like tracks that were already laid out with like this kind of terrain asset and you could build trains to go between like traders and the different food packing stations and stuff i feel like that would be awesome but the last thing i want to do is i just want to test how powerful this actually is so if i take another train car here 
Um, you know, just a standard one. And remove this nonsense. Take one whole car off. Perfect. And if we weld this onto the train itself, right? It's kind of a little bit laggy. I just want to see which is more powerful. If we put an electric engine powering these wheels versus the piston engine. I know this is going to come down to like scrap mechanic physics and the friction between the wheels and the ground and obviously the weight of the train. So if the train was, I guess we should have put an electric engine on the train. But anyway, so if the train is heavier than this, you know, then obviously the train's going to get more friction, right? So it'll probably win. But an electric engine also has unlimited power. So I don't really know. Let's put a switch on this as well. I just want to see if it's more power. I, I have a feeling the electric engine is going to win, honestly. Because I think the piston engine doesn't deliver constant power. It's got all the gears and stuff, which, you know, cause it to lose some speed and all that. And uh, electric engines and scrap mechanic are kind of just OP. So if we turn that on, it'll pull us, obviously, in reverse. Oh, until, until it can't. What are we stuck on? Anything? We're just... Wow. Okay, hold on. Piston engine forward. Electric in reverse. Okay. The piston engine gets stuck. That's so funny. It's got like some weird break point. Or the electric engine. You know what? It just can't push the pistons. That's all. Look, the wheels are stuck. That's so interesting. But yeah, no, the piston engine, it cannot. Oh! Yeah, the electric engine would still win. The piston engine can like lock the wheels, but it can't actually pull against it. It's interesting. I wonder if this can actually pull... Oh yeah, it can just... It can pull the cart with full brakes on. That's amazing. Look at that. This is like how I play railroads and why I complain about my engine not being powerful enough. Because I have the brakes on the car the entire time. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if there's other cool things you'd like to see me build in Scrap Mechanic. It's been a while since I built something cool in Scrap Mechanic. But uh, obviously I've been playing with a lot of trains. And I kind of got the inkling to... Uh, you know, go back and do some train stuff. And of course, the railroad assets in Scrap Mechanic are fantastic. I really do wish that this stuff would get added into survival at some point where there'd be, you know, railways in survival. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you have any other cool builds you'd like to see in Scrap Mechanic. I have another few ideas that I'd like to try building in Scrap Mechanic and uh, sort of getting back into building some cool projects that, you know, take a little bit of time but are actually kind of fun and, you know, have a little bit more of a purpose than just driving around or whatever. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.